they are flat, boring, and just uninteresting most of the time. So we are trying to build something a little bit more fun. This is going to be at a lot more elevation uh, and hopefully look really cool. So here's how we're going to do it. We have these XPS foam boards. Uh, you can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, we are going to cut these into little mountain stackers. And we're going to show you what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to draw out a few different pieces. Uh, so we have three of these boards. Uh, one of them we're going to keep relatively the same size as it is, just kind of cut around the edges so that it can be a, a larger mat for the entire battlefield. The others we're going to cut a little bit smaller. Uh, so I'm going to uh, make some maybe one by one kind of oval type shapes that will be our blocks. So here we go. How big are we thinking? Probably... That's probably a good piece there. Yeah. All right, so there's one piece. When you're drawing these out, you don't want them all to be the same size. You actually want a lot of different sizes so that when you're making a game board, you have a lot of options. All right, so I'm gonna use this Olfa knife that extends pretty long to cut these out. You can use like a kitchen knife, but uh, this is a more professional tool. Here we go. So there's our first piece. We're gonna carve this down and add details. So now I'm gonna frick this thing up very a lot. Uh, so I'm just gonna cut into the sides, cut into the top with this with this knife here uh, until I get the desired look. Let's frick it up. You can see here I'm cutting in at one angle, then cutting in at the opposite angle. This makes a really nice jagged look around the sides. You don't have to be too neat with this, you can actually get pretty messy with it. Just kind of carve until you think it looks good. So I'm also going to add some cracks, some cracking into the tops and bottoms. These are double sided, so I'm going to put cracks into both sides. And again, you can see I'm cutting in at one angle, then cutting at the opposite angle. And then I go in further to add more detail. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And then here I'm just randomly cutting out sections from the top. Again, you don't have to be neat, just carve until it looks good. I'm just going to texture it with this tinfoil ball all over the entire thing. Okay, so we have finished making a, a, a buttload of these tiles. We probably have too many, uh, but that's okay. So now we are going to coat them all in Mod Podge. So we're gonna start with just the top surface. So this is also a Mod Podge, the uh, classic uh, Mod Podge mixed with black paint. Okay, 
Now that I've got pretty good coverage to add a little bit extra texture, we're gonna take a couple things. We're gonna take some of this blended turf and then we're also gonna add some, some just regular dirt from, I think this is from Army Painter. It's not gonna look like dirt though when it's painted. Yeah. So we're gonna start with some of this stuff, some turf. All right. And you're gonna see at the end that adding this turf adds a lot of detail to the finished product. It goes a long way in making it look like actual rock. Also worth noting that we only added turf to one side. You like that? I do. Probably wrap up soon. Okay, now that I've got a little bit on there, good variety, we're gonna add some of this dirt, which is a little bit um, thicker. Thicker, I guess. I don't know what the word is for that. Larger grains. Larger grains, yeah. And we're gonna add some of that on for some nice variety. Don't wanna do too much of that because we want these tiles to be mostly flat so that they can stack and so that models can stand on them. Get some nice uh, seasoning on that. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna set this to, si to the side. I'm not gonna knock any of this off yet. I'm just gonna set it aside. And we're gonna let that Mod Podge fully tear, fully dry. So we have all of the tiles done like that. So now what we're gonna do is we have a bottle, a spray bottle of a mixture of glue and water. And we're just gonna squirt this out on all of these tiles in order to kind of seal all of that dirt on there nicely so it doesn't rub off really easily. Now Anthony is going over the top of that tile again with the black Mod Podge mixture. This is not only going to act as our base coat, but also further lock in the turf on the top. And after that dries, we're gonna go over the entire thing with the Mod Podge black mixture. So we have fully coated all of the tiles with that black Mod Podge mix. So now what we're gonna do is a pretty heavy gray dry brush here. Uh, and once we're done with that, we're gonna go over with a lighter dry brush. So yeah. We did our dry brushing for this project in three different stages. The first stage was a very dark gray that was very generously applied. The second stage was a lighter gray applied less generously. And then the last stage was actually just pure white, just barely dry brushed on the uppermost parts of the turf. That's coming along pretty good. And once we had them all painted, we took them outside and coated them with a matte varnish. And it was done. This video was inspired by a YouTube video by Storycraft Society. Special thanks to him. I'll leave a link to his video in the description. This is a super easy project. I think we made this in two days, but a lot of that was just waiting for things to dry. This is a great tile set that can be used for really a lot of things, volcanic terrain or even like inside cave terrain. It's very versatile. And a really cool thing about it is that you can stack them. So you can make a lot of different scenarios. You can make a mountain, you can make a ravine. It's really easy to make cool scenarios with it. We also used this same technique to make grass tiles. 
For that we just used the same process, but we just used grass turf on the top, and it was already green so we didn't even need to paint it. If you want to see these tiles in action, as well as our grass tiles, check out our actual play Table for Two, where we play a game called Iron Sworn. It's a really fun GMless system, check it out. And subscribe for weekly RPG related videos. Thanks for watching.